Hi, I'm Marissa Christie with the Kentucky Center for Ag and Rural Development, or KCARD. I'm our Project Development Specialist, and I'm here to talk to you about the Local Meat Capacity Grant Program. And it closes on July the 19th, so we wanted to make sure that if you're interested in your meat processor, that you are ready to go and you know the next steps to take. So um, going to go ahead and get started real quick. This is going to be a super quick overview. So this is offered by the Agricultural Marketing Service. So if you go into Google and you type or another search engine, you type AMS, Local Meat Capacity Grant, and hit go, it'll take you to the main web page. Um, there are a couple of key documents, the main website, which I just mentioned, and you can see it there on the screen. And there's also something called the request for application. So most people will not um, read the whole thing, but I actually recommend that you print it out and have it handy if you're planning on applying because it'll help answer questions. We're always here to answer questions too, but I want to make sure that you're aware of those two things. Uh, because that will have instructions on everything from getting registered on grants.gov and sam.gov to where to attach the stuff when you're ready to apply your application. A real quick overview of this grant is it's due July 19th. It has to be turned in on grants.gov. In order to be submitted on grants.gov, you need to have your sam.gov completed. It won't let you hit the submit button unless you have something called a unique entity identifier. So if you, we'll talk about that in a minute. Funds are really about modernizing, increasing the capacity, diversifying the species or products a meat processor can offer, decentralizing meat processing. So if you're listening to this and you're one of the four largest meat processors in the nation, you're not eligible, but I doubt any of them are. So this is for our meat processors in this state. Um, so this is really just about expanding the capacity for inspected meat. If you are a custom meat plant and you don't plan to change that, then you are not eligible. If you are planning to um, become inspected, then you are eligible as long as that's going to be completed by the end of your grant project. One thing to keep in mind, they will be prioritizing applications that help serve underserved farmers, which means limited resource farmers um, from the standpoint of income, any smaller farms, beginning farmers, veterans, and any uh, historically socially disadvantaged groups. So if you want to assist us with this grant, KCARD is always here to help. You know, you can go to our main website under contact if you've never heard of us before or if you just want to get back in contact and fill out the little email thing and say, like, I want help understanding or filling out the local meat capacity grant program. Go ahead and you can do that. And also on our website, we have a getting started guide for federal grants. So what that can help you with is like if you're legally incorporated and you need to go to SAM.gov, how to get registered for that. Um, then you're going to go to grants.gov and any step along that process, we are happy to help you. Uh, we don't charge a fee for this. We have Zoomed with many people and sat across the tabletop for many people helping get those federal registrations. And then also AMS has the Meat and Poultry Processing Capacity Technical Assistance Program, which um, there's a link right there, and those are resources from across the nation that can help you for free in application preparation as well. So there's two types of applications. There's the simplified equipment only application, and that's the one that I see most of our meat processors in the state wanting to use. Uh, between $10,000 and $250,000 in grant, there's no match required, which means you don't got to show that you're putting any skin in the game. There's no match letter. They don't care. This is for you to buy that piece of equipment you wanted and needed. Do you need to upgrade your, you know, packaging and labeling? Do you need to, up, you know, get a new thing for sausage? You know, do you need a smoker? Um, the limit here is that literally the only thing we'll pay for is the piece of equipment. Have some quotes attached, have that in your budget. It's not going to pay for your time. It's not going to pay for someone to install. It's not going to pay for any facility upgrades. It's not going to pay for any of that. Now, the other type of application is a processing expansion project. Those require a dollar for dollar match. They can be in kind. And if you're serving certain populations, the match can actually be reduced. Um, it's between uh, $100,000 and $5 million in grants. So it's a lot. Um, but it can actually include equipment and building upgrades, 
uh, staff training, HACCP, um, you know, the big catch on both of these is that it will not pay for a change to your existing building footprint. On the processing and expansion grant, if you like, I need to move this wall to make my workflow better, it can pay for that. The simplified equipment can't. Now, if you want to move the wall and another piece of equipment goes in there, it'll pay for the equipment. What you have to balance out is whether just getting the equipment and getting the equipment totally paid for in a very simple grant application compared to the processing expansion, comparatively, versus trying to get everything that you're doing paid for, and but you have to come up with a 50% of the money or in kind. So that's the thing to weigh. Um, I really think they're going to be looking to make a lot of these simplified equipment grants to smaller processors, uh, which they would consider most of our processors small. So those are the two application types. They have two different project narratives on that website that was in the slide I shared. So um, you're not going this alone. If you're interested in this at all, I please go ahead and go type into your Google thing, SAM.gov. Make sure if you've got a SAM.gov registration already that it's up to date. If you don't have a SAM.gov registration, then start the process because that could be the thing that holds you back and we don't want that to happen. So start that, reach out to us. There's our general contact info. If you just want to shoot us an email or give us a call and we will help pair you with the person that is best able to assist you. So, um, Thank you. I hope that this was informative. So keep in mind, this is for equipment. It won't extend your footprint. And if you do the bigger grant, you can also get some operating money uh, for staff training and moving things around in your plant physically as far as where things are placed. So thank you. And I hope this was helpful.